Hello, good day to one and all. This is Ms. A. Krishna Sunda, Assistant Professor, Department of English, KAHM Unity Women's College, Mancheri. Today, we are going to discuss Unit 7 from the text, Writing for Academic and Professional Success. Now, Unit 7 is titled as Writing for Professional Purposes, Part 1. So here we start with Unit 7. So what exactly is the purpose of learning professional writing? Now professional writing or academic writing can help us in many different ways. The very first thing to help us to analyze the content, to criticize books, movies and objects around you, to learn different styles of expression, and more than that, through this process of analyzing the content, you learn new words, new vocabulary. So, I would like to take you towards a picture now. Now, the first picture is a book, a novel written by David Diop. And the title is At Night All Blood is Black. So, this is a recent book which has won the Booker Prize Award. And now, the second picture is about a recent Malayalam movie which was released as an Amazon original one which is titled as Zeras. Now, the third one is a picture of a laptop. So, you can see this first one here is a book which is published. The second one is a movie which is released recently and the third one is a new product which is launched into the market. So see, all these things happen around us in our society. New books are published, new movies are released, new products are emerging every day and therefore it is always a requirement that you get updated with all these things. You get connected with the exterior world. Now, living in COVID scenario during the pandemic days, how can you get updated with everything happening around you? And this happens only through reading. And this is where reviews become very important. So in this session, you will be going through four different strategies. One is reviews case studies, reports, and surveys. So in part one, we would be discussing reviews and case studies. So now let us have a look at the first term. What is a review? Now I'm sure that all of you might know what a review is. You might have gone through a number of book reviews, sometimes movie reviews, or sometimes product reviews. So I'm sure you know what it is, but I'm going to tell you what could be the technical definition of a review. A review in its technicality is a critical analysis of a book, play, film, product or a service. So it could be anything, anything around you. Now sometimes certain companies or firms or sometimes certain institutions or organizations, they analyze the quality of entertainment. And this quality can be analyzed through the reviews. Now, if you have gone through newspapers, you might have noticed that most of the newspapers would be having a separate entertainment page. And in this entertainment page, there will be reviews about new movies, new books, new products as well. So, a review is something which is creative and interesting. Now, why do you call it creative? Now, there would be a number of movies which are getting released, but when I write a review, I write it in my own way. So, that is why you call it creative. The same movie, if you are writing a review about it, you are writing it in your style. So, though it is about the same movie, we write it in different styles. And that is why we say each review is something which is creative and interesting. A review reflects the spirit of the age and it gives an idea to the reader how this book 
goes or how this movie goes. So now I'm going to take you towards an example so that if you go through these examples, you will get more familiarized with reviews. Now, this is actually a page from Times of India. And this is a separate page, which is actually E-Times, which is entertainment part. So here you can see this is a review about a recently released Bollywood movie and the title is Hazim Dilruba. So you can see the date here. Now this review came on 2nd July 2021 very recently. So the timing is given here. This movie is 2 hours and 15 minutes. So the genre is given. It is crime, drama, mystery, romance, thriller. So the rating is also given 3.5 out of 5. So you can see this is all about the movie, the cast and the review goes here. So this is the title of the review. Hazim Dilruba review Tapsi and Bikrant slay in this delectably dark and twisted tale of love. So you can see the name of the writer, the time and the critics rating which is actually 3.5 out of 5. Then the story is described in a few lines. Then there is a review by the writer. So this will help you to understand whether this movie is something which is of your choice. Now after going through this movie, I watched this movie Hazim Dilruba. I was really tempted to watch this movie after going through the review. So reviews can sometimes help you to choose whether to watch or whether not to watch. So now we are moving ahead with how to do a book review or how to write a film review. Now, book review and film review, as you can see, they can be considered as one and the same, except for one single difference that film reviews will require more detailing than a book review, because that is a visual extravaganza. So apart from that difference, it's almost the very same. So how do you write a book review? Sometimes your teachers might ask you to do a book review, or sometimes you will have to write a book review. So how do you do that? Now, the very first thing is that you have to read the book carefully and for that, you should have the possession of the book, either a hard copy or a soft copy and you have to read the entire book carefully and while reading, you should note down your impressions about the book. And it is always good if you can research the author and the other works written by this author. Now, sometimes it can be a new author, a fresh writer, in which case you needn't do these things. Now, again, a review will consist of an introduction. And this introduction should be basically a captivating or an arresting kind of introduction. Because it is only when your introduction is good that people will want to read the rest of the review. Again, in the review, you will have to mention the theme of the book, the period of the book, the characters, action, narration, and presentation. So you have to mention all these things. And along with that, in the last part, your findings and recommendations. Now, sometimes you might have noticed in certain book reviews, in the last part, the writer would have written, I did not like this book very much. Or sometimes they would say this was not as good as his earlier book. Or sometimes you would say this is a very wonderful book. You should not miss it. So this is what you call as findings and recommendations. Now, in a review, it is always your style which is reflected. And the style will always be direct and personal. Now, when it is a book review, you will definitely speak about the number of pages. And sometimes you will also mention where you can buy this book. Now, today, when we live in an online world, you can mention, yes, this is available in Amazon or this is available in Flipkart. So where to buy this from can also be mentioned in the book review. So this is all about doing a book review. Now, let's move on to the next one. Now, before moving on to the next one, in page number 185, there is a sample review given. Now, the sample review is about a book. So, the title of the book which needs to be mentioned and how the introduction should be written, how the body should be written and how the conclusion should come. So, everything is mentioned here in the sample. So, it is given in a table in page number 185. So, I request 
each one of you to go through this review. Now, apart from that, there is a very detailed book review given in page number 18687. So you can see I've mentioned it in the last part of the slide, page number 186187. The title of the book here is Atlantic Crossing, a comparison of European and American society. So here comes a very detailed review of a book. So this is in page number 186, 187. So please go through that detailed book review. So now we are moving on to the film reviews. Now, how can you do a film review? As I mentioned before, it's almost the same pattern except for the fact that you have to concentrate more on specific details when it is a movie. Now, when you talk about a film review, you have to mention the length of the movie, as you have seen with the previous example. Again, where to watch, you can also mention this. Now, the rest of the things are the very same thing. You have to watch the movie first. You have to note down the impressions. Again, you can talk about the director. A research on the director will be really helpful so that you understand what kind of movies are you talking about. And you have to get into more details since it is a movie. You can mention cinematography, camera, angles, dialogues, costume, genre. Now, what is genre? Now, genre is actually the category to which a film belongs to. For example, sometimes it can be a comedy movie. Sometimes it can be a tragic movie. Sometimes it can be a horror movie. Sometimes mystery. Sometimes detective thrillers. So it, it goes on. The list goes on. Now, one thing that you have to remember here is that whenever you write a book review or a film review, make sure that you are not spilling out everything in the review because you are not supposed to do that. Now, sometimes when you read reviews, you might have seen in certain titles, there are no spoilers, no spoilers ahead. You might have seen this. So what is this? Now, suppose if you are planning to watch a movie, suppose it is a thriller movie, like finding who committed the murder, that kind of movie, who done it kind of movie. If you are planning to watch this kind of a movie and you are eagerly waiting to watch the movie, and in between, if you come across a review and if you read that review, if the entire story is narrated in the review, the one who has killed such and such a person is this character. If all these things are mentioned in the book review, you will actually lose your curiosity to watch the movie or to read the novel. So you should not actually mention these minor details, like the main details, or sometimes there would be certain twists and turns. You should not mention these twists and turns because it will take away the suspense. So no spoilers are allowed in book reviews or movie reviews. Now more than that, in movie reviews you can also mention the costume, sometimes the color sequences which are used, sometimes the sound effect, sometimes BGM. Now you can see BGM is actually the background music, again camera angles etc. Now I do watch a lot of movies but I'm not very keen with Tamil movies because I don't understand Tamil much. But recently I read a number of uh, reviews about a uh, recent Tamil movie. So that is what I have been telling you that sometimes when you read reviews you get an understanding of the movie whether this is of your choice or not. So as I've told you I I'm not very keen with Tamil movies. But recently, I could find a lot of positive reviews about a recent Tamil movie, Sarpatta Parambari. I'm sure you might have heard of this. This is a very recent movie where you can see Arya as the main hero in the role of the protagonist. And this is a sports movie, something that is closely connected with boxing. Now, in my case, I am not very keen with sports as well. So, I did not watch this movie initially thinking that, first of all, it's a Tamil movie. It's very difficult for me to comprehend it. Secondly, it is a sports movie, boxing movie, and I'm not very keen with sports. But I could see a number of reviews and I started re reading many reviews. And in all these reviews, they were recommending that you should not miss this movie. And that is how I planned, I desired it to watch this movie. And when I watched this movie, I too felt the very same. It's a period movie set 
uh, during the emergency period in India in Tamil Nadu. So it's a period movie. You have to see it in that way. But if you ask me what is my recommendation, I would say it's a good watch. A one-time watch is fine with this movie. Worth a watch. That would be my recommendation. So see, reviews can really bring a change in the way you think. So sometimes you feel that this is not your kind of movie but after reading reviews this can be changed. So now I'm going to take you towards a few more examples here. Now this is a review which I have written a year ago. Now this is related with a Malayalam movie Kapela, which was released in 2020. So you can see it is here and if you look at the last part you can see 349 people found this helpful which means around 350 people might have read or they might have gone through my review and they might have decided whether to watch it or not. Now on the right hand side again you can see this is another review which I had given a year ago. Now this is about the movie Sufim Sujade. So this is the review that I have written. Now again you can see on the left hand side there is another person Joey Joyson. I don't know who that is but he has also written a review. Now you can give the stars. Now look at this movie. You can see in Capella I have given 5 stars but with Sufim Sujadim I have given only 3 stars. So you have a choice to rate the movie. So this is actually a Google review. Now anyone can write a Google review. Now I have written a Google review. If you want to write a Google review, you can just go to the site and you can open the site and you can write your own review. Now this is another review which I have written a week ago. Now this is about the uh, recent Malayalam movie, the Prithviraj movie, which is called Case. So again, 12 people found this helpful. So that's a very minimal number. Only 12 people might have read this review. So this is all about reviewing books and movies. So now we are moving on to the next part. This is about reviewing a product. Now reviewing a product means this is really important because this is a great way to share information with others. Now you might have seen this in Amazon, Flipkart and many other online shopping sites. Now in my case, I can tell you if I'm planning to buy something, the first thing I would do is I would go through a number of reviews about that product. So if you go through these reviews, you will get an understanding how this product is actually working. Is it really good? Is it very expensive? Is it of good use? So you understand the pros and cons in connection with the product. Now, when you're looking for reviews, sometimes you would see only exaggerated reviews, which means paid reviews, because certain companies will pay people to write good reviews. So this is what you call as exaggerated reviews. Now, the next one is very poor reviews. Now, this is another strategy where maybe sometimes when there is a conflict or sometimes if you do not want someone to flourish, you will be uh, completely uh, dedicating yourself to put the other person uh, to a downfall where you are claiming that the product is very bad, even when you do not know what actually the product is. So sometimes these kind of conflicts or sometimes rivalry can create poor reviews. Suppose if one person dislikes another person, they will not write good reviews about those products which they are manufacturing or bringing up. So this can be a deliberate attempt. So you should not actually consider both these reviews. You should not go for these exaggerated reviews. You should not go for these poor reviews because a good product review would be a balanced assessment of the product. It would be about the use and knowledge in relation with the project. So now I am going to take you towards a few examples. So reviewing a product. Now this is a product which I bought a couple of months back. So this is actually colored font and I don't know how many of you might know about this. This is actually uh, an ingredient which is used for baking cakes. Okay, And I, I really love to bake cakes. So this is something which I bought and it was just an okay okay kind of product that's what I felt so this is the review that I had given because I made a spider-man cake with this fondant so this is my review this is a spider-man cake which I have made I had bought both black and red fondants the fondant was a bit sticky but if you knead it well enough it works well overall it's a good product for the price but I'm not very happy with that so 
it's an okay okay kind of review that I have given. Now moving on to the next one, you can see here this is reviewing a product. Now reviewing a product, here I am using a small plant along with its pot to explain this. Now this was a website description I got. You can see the first picture. This was a website description and you can see the second picture here downwards. Now this is what I got. Now if you look at these two pictures they look almost the same except for one single yellow leaf. Okay. So in short I really liked this product because I was very much worried like how are they going to pack this plant which is placed in a pot which is filled with mud. Will it spill? Will it be ruptured? I had all these doubts in my mind but when I received the product it was well in shape. It was neatly patterned, it was neatly packed so everything was fine. So I really liked this product. So when you are reviewing a product there are certain things that you have to keep in your mind. Now the very first thing is research the product well. Read the website descriptions go through a number of reviews and then you are getting the product in your hand. Now suppose I got the product. Should I write the review on the very same day itself? No. You have to wait because you have to use the product and see how it is working. Only then you can actually write a review. So you have to use the product and then you have to see what others are looking for within this product and then you have to write the review. So I have not written a review about this plant but I am attaching the reviews written by other customers. Now there is one customer whose name is Raj Gupta. Now he says this is not worth the price. He did not like the product. He says it is very expensive. And he has also showcased the pictures. Now you look at the next one. Jyoti Sahu, she says this is a nice plant. So she has given complete 5 star ratings whereas Raj Gupta has given only two star ratings. So when you go through these reviews you will understand how it is going to work. So reviewing a product is always good for the people around you because they too will understand how this product can be working. And more than that you can also give them an analysis. You can also talk about the price, whether the quality is good, whether it is user friendly. You can mention all these things when you are reviewing a product. So with this we come to the end of reviews and now we are moving on with case studies. Now what do you mean by the term case studies? I am sure you might have heard about this. So let us look into the definition of a case study. Now case studies are usually situation which will have a conflict or a problem which needs to be resolved. So this is what you mean by case studies. Now this is in fact a research strategy to conduct an investigation into real life context. Now case studies are usually used very much in the field of medicine, law, and business because it bridges the gap between theory and practice. Now Practice is something which comes very much into these three fields like medicine, law and business and that is why we say it is important in these fields because they can bridge the gap between theory and practice. Now case studies are usually more realistic and they help students to foresee realistic problems. So how do you work with a case study? In colleges and schools normally a case study will be entrusted to a group of students which means the five students or the six students together will be finding a solution for the problem. So first you have to understand the issue. The second thing you have to analyze it. Now you have to identify the different areas and segments and then you have to see how you can resolve it. So discussion is important here. Participation from each student is important here and finally with a lot of discussions you will be coming to the concluding part. So one thing that you have to remember here is that how can you resolve it differently? When all the others are suggesting one solution, what different solution or what different recommendation can you give? 
This is what you have to do. So you will be giving some kind of suggestion or recommendation at the end of the case study. So that is where you bring the conclusion and this conclusion will be a recommendation by synthesizing all the conflicts and issues. Now, when you do a case study, a case study will definitely help you to think. So your reasoning develops. And when you think, when you discuss with the other participants, when you start writing down, your language improves. So automatically, the vocabulary too will be improving. So these are the benefits when you work with a case study. Now there is an exercise which is given in page number 195. Page number 195, there is an exercise where you have to match the topics on the left with the case studies on the right. So on the left hand side, you can see the problems and on the right hand side, you can see different solutions or recommendations given through case studies. So I'm just trying to read it out. If you're having the textbook with you, you can mark the answers so that you needn't come back to the videos again to check the answers. So just mark it in the textbook. So the first one is methods, methods of teaching dyslexic children. So the answer here is an experimental approach to reading difficulties with under eights in Singapore. So that is a case study. Now the second one, improving crop yields in semi-deserts. And the answer is using solar power to operate irrigation pumps in Oman. Then comes reducing infant mortality. So the answer can be a program to cut smoking among pregnant women in a Greek clinic. Fourth one, building earthquake resistant bridges. The lessons from Chile, how three structures withstood the 2010 earthquake. The next one, dealing with reoffending among prisoners. Working and learning how a Brazilian scheme encouraged convicts to stay out of jail. Now the last one, improving recycling rates in large cities. The answer is the Berlin experiment, increasing public participation in collecting and sorting waste. So this will help you to understand how case studies work. Now, in page number 196 to 198, there is a detailed case study, a model case study which is given. Now, my request is that you should go through that because only then you will understand how it works. Now, this is about IKEA, I-K-E-A, a Swedish furniture company. Now, this Swedish furniture company, one of the international companies, actually moved into China and they established their mart the furniture mart there. Now, when the Swedish company established this furniture business in China, a lot of problems came up. Because first of all, there is a lot of difference between the Swedish culture and Chinese culture. So naturally, the difference would be there even in the make of the furniture, even in the uh, patterns of the furniture. So lots of problems came up and how they resolved this. So this is all about the example given in page number 196 to 198. So please do go through that. So I would also like to give you some more examples. Now this is again another case study based on disposable cameras. Since the rise of smartphones, disposable cameras are no longer a high demand product. We all know that because very minimum number of people are actually using cameras now because the majority would be depending on the phone camera. So after the analysis, you can see 80% people are using smartphones and it is only 20% who would be using the disposable kind of cameras. Now this is about learning from young children research in early childhood music. How this early childhood music can create a change in the child when the child becomes an adult. Now here are some other examples of case studies. What makes students drop out from higher studies? Now see, if you go through this case study, sometimes if you're talking about girls, it could be marriage, 
pregnancy, looking after the babies, etc. If it is about boys, why are they actually moving out from higher studies? It could be financial problems at their house or maybe some other problems or maybe they do not want to be dependent at their homes. So these are some of the reasons where you will have to analyze it and then finally come with a conclusion suggesting recommendations. The next example is role of higher education in the economic development of the country, then strategies to teach children with visual difficulties. So that's something which we already saw in the match, the following example, dyslex dyslexic children. Then comes best strategies for online teaching. So you have to analyze the pros and cons and then you have to recommend a few suggestions which can make things better. So with this, we come to the end of the session where we had completed reviews and case studies. We'll continue with the same unit with part two. So thank you very much for your patient listening. In case if you need more assistance or if you have got any doubts, you can connect with me in my email ID. So thank you very much. Thank you.